Littlebury, where are you? You're scheduled to address the sales force in 15 minutes. Ranger Standin? Uh, but it's such short notice, and who? Bert Appleby? You don't mean... Well, yes, I'm all for human interest. Yes, and grassroots approach. But 30 years service, man and boy. Aha, company loyalty. Right. Yes, but Mr. Whittlebury... Mr. Whittlebury! Bad Appleby! Mr. Appleby! Mr. Appleby! Aha! Miss Wright, just doing a spot of quality control, constant vigilance, that's what it's all about. No time for that. Quick, get that off. Well, this is so sudden. No, listen. You are about to perform a vital service for your company. I'm game if you are. No, listen. You have been personally chosen by Mr. Whittlebury to deliver an important address to the sales force. Oh, right. I'll get the van. No, not that sort of delivery. A talk. You've got to give a talk. A talk? What about? You've got to announce the new Bass brand initiatives. Now, there's absolutely nothing to be nervous about. Nervous? <laughs> It's just a little chat to one or two of our salespeople. I'll be right beside you. No need to worry. Take this. What is it? Your script. You'll need it to tell them about the new products. Right. Here we go. Stella, what's all that? Visual aids for the presentation. Well, nice, isn't it? Don't worry about that now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a man who needs no introduction. A man whose sterling qualities and thrusting go-ahead ideas have kept Bass at the forefront of the British brewing industry. Ladies and gentlemen... It's not Mr. Whittlebury. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr... It's Bert Appleby. Pardon? Bert Appleby. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bert Appleby. Oh, who worried? I am. Just read from your script. Oh. Right. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> I expect you're wondering what on earth I'm doing here. <laughs> you're not the only one. Are you? The product launch. Ah, yeah, right. The, the product launch. The product launch for... The take-home market. Oh, yeah. The good old take-home market, eh? <laughs> so what are we taking home, I hear you ask? Use <laughs> your script. What? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, oh. Tenants Pilsner. <laughs> press button. Oh, I'll, I'll press the button, right. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Modern technology, eh? It's amazing. Now then, look at that. That's a sight for dry throats, eh? Oh, Tenants Pilsner Lager. My word, yes. Been brewing fine lagers for nearly a hundred years. <laughs> What's it say? Huh? Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> Now exported to more than 80 countries all over the world, it says here. <laughs> right. Uh, from this, uh, what's name here? Chart. Oh, chart, yeah. There's a chart. We can see that at home, the lager market is not just alive and kicking, but it's expanded all the time. In fact, lager now accounts for 48% of all take-home beer sales. <laughs> 48%. That's nearly half, eh? <laughs> I don't know levels, you know, in maths. Last year, failed. Will you get on? All right, all right. Anyway, in the last 12 months, sales figures for take-home lagers in England and Wales were up by 20%, compared with a total take-home market growth of only 11%. <laughs> we're certainly quaffing our share of the old lager, aren't we, eh? Uh, oh, press button. Right. Uh, uh, seems to be a slight technical, what's his name, Miss, uh, right? Lovely girl, lovely girl, but is she part of the take-home market? Now, as you know, tenants already have three very successful brands available in the take-home market. And there they are, Tenants Lager, Scotland's biggest selling lager, Tenants Extra, the fastest growing premium lager, and Tenants Super which incidentally is the strongest lager brewed in the UK. In fact, the wife's mother can only get through 11 or 12 before she falls off a broomstick. <laughs> yeah, worth a try. Press button. 
And here are the little beauties we've all been waiting for. Tenants Pilsner, the new addition to this highly successful range of products. <laughs> oh, yeah. A brewer's dream, Tenants Pilsner is. N contains nothing but the finest ingredients, you know, including 100% malt for a noticeably smoother taste. I'll uh, just check this one in my official capacity. Oh, yes, of course, an expert like yours truly can taste that special Czechoslovakian strain of yeast that gives Tenants its genuine continental Pilsner taste. <coughs> And here we have the result of a recent survey down in the smoke, which clearly shows that the great British public have taste when it comes to taste. As you can see, there was a marked preference for Tenants Pilsner over what is laughably called probably the best lager in the world. And as for that stuff that refreshes the parts other beers can't reach, well, it clearly doesn't do it as well as Tenants. Cheers. <coughs> Now, the point is that these new take-home packs of Tenants Pilsner, that's the 440ml cans and the 2-litre PET bottles, have been launched by Bass following the success of Tenants Pilsner on draft. So the market for them is already here. And no wonder, because for a genuine Pilsner lager, it's very competitively priced. See, it's less expensive than other lagers of the same strength and stronger than other lagers of the same price. So you went both ways. Value for money, mate. That's what the public wants. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. Never mind about that. Just press it. Press it? Press what? Press the button. But, oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I used to drink Aldrey Lager. But this stuff is, I don't know, it's just better. I don't know, that's what I'm drinking now. I've always drank lager, but uh, Pilsner's got a different taste about it, so I just like it, you know? No, it's like a, uh, a Pilsner, I think, you drink abroad, you know? It's a difference. It has got a nice taste to it, definite. Lovely taste. <laughs> Lovely. And how do we know that Tenants Pilsner is a winner? Because we've tested it in over 300 pubs. And the customers were so enthusiastic that Draft Tenants Pilsner is now available in more than 3,500 pubs and clubs in the Midlands and the South, with a rollout into the north of England imminent. Anyway, further research has indicated a strong demand for Tenants Pilsner in take-home cans and PET bottles, and hence, Bob's your uncle. That's Bob with a banner. Not now with a goggle box, Miss Wright. I'm in full flow here. Yeah. Advertising. You what? Tell them about the advertising in the script. I'm coming to that. It's true lie. Draft Tenants Pilsner was launched with an actual £1.3 million advertising campaign on television and posters. <laughs> it's true, £1.3 million. <laughs> with the theme, The Taste That's Making History. Now, I like that. The taste is making history. <laughs> so you can bet your life a lot of people are going to be hearing about Tenants Pilsner after seeing these two commercials. Oh, thank you, Miss Wright. <laughs> some strange quirk of fate, we find ourselves at the siege of Constantinople. Now we're here to see what they make of the remarkable new lager, Tenants Pilsner, with its very different and satisfying taste. Will you do the honour, show, mate? That Tenants Pilsner taste is certainly going down well in Constantinople, eh? But fair's fair. That's only half the story. Just see what the other lot think, eh? Everyone agrees about the taste of new Tenants Pilsner Lager. It's the taste that's making history. I'd like to introduce a new element into this debate in the form of this amazing new Tenants Pilsner Lager. Thank you, Charmaine. I think you'll agree. 
It's got a really different, satisfying taste. And that's as welcome these days as a heat wave in Siberia, eh, comrade? Everyone agrees about the taste of new tenants' pills in the lager. Oh, there are you. It's the taste that's making history. Lovely mover, lovely mover. I'm glad I'm a happily married man. <laughs> Sometimes. Now, for the new product. The take-home tenants Pilsner. There's going to be an advertising campaign on Capital Radio in London in September. With three million 20 pence off coupons being distributed by the GPO to London households. Part of the Capital Radio Coupon Bank promotion. <laughs> That's 20 pence off a four-pack or 20 pence off the two-litre PET bottle. Plus, there'll be ads in the Midlands, South Wales and South West editions of the Daily Mirror in September. These incorporate 20 pence off coupons, plus a free draw for the Commodore SX64 home computer worth £900. And what's more, there's the Tenants Pilsner Roadshow. Straight up. This bus will be touring major cities and towns. They'll be giving away more coupons and all sorts of special offers and giveaways. <laughs> How do you think they're all going to get into this bus, Miss Wright, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, what all this means to you people out there is that Tenants Pilsner is going to knock her for six. They'll go like hot cakes. Yeah! They'll be ripping your arms off to try and get Tenants Pilsner onto their shelves. <laughs> Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? I mean, with a taste like that, wow! Cheers! Yeah. Oh, I needed that. Anyway, that's the new bus product number one, Tenants Pilsner. And to sum up, quality Pilsner lager at a competitive price carries the famous tenant's name. And as your continental pilsner, it completes the range of bass lagers. Right, uh, at this stage, I'd like to show you a film in which Sophia Loren, Lord Longford, Cliff Richard and Billy Graham all explain why they prefer the smooth taste of tenants to any other pilsner. I thought it was too good to be true. Still can't have everything. But we've got the old tenants Pilsner, and that's better than the lot of them put together. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Bird Apple be here. Uh, oh, Mr. Keogh. Uh, yes, fine, sir. Worthington special bidder, sir. It, it's coming up next, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I want to go and work in here. Why? A few words of encouragement from Mr. Keogh. <laughs> So, uh, what's next on the agenda, Miss uh, Ride? Ah, Worthy. Worthington Special Bitter. <laughs> There's a name to conjure with. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll conjure with it a little later on. <laughs> with any luck. Um, so, let's have a look what's been happening in the old bitter market, eh? <sighs> and as you'll see, last year's sales of take-home bitter grew by 38%. Probably because the wife's mother had to win on the pools. <laughs> no, no, uh, seriously. Um, Bitter sales are on the up and up, no doubt about it. And the competitive price brands are the ones to watch. <clears throat> they make up almost one-fifth of all bitter sales, and they were responsible for 40% of last year's growth in the bitter market. How about that, then, eh? <laughs> Just think of the opportunity for all you sales whiz kids out there, eh? <laughs> See, it says here that by 1986, bitters will go up from 25% of the take-home ale market to 40%. Yeah, 40%. And up to one third of that 40% will consist of the price competitive brands. So, how do you make the most of growth like that? Piece of cake. <laughs> For a kickoff, bass are a force to be reckoned with in the bidder market. Always have been. After all, it was us that test marketed the first canned bitter back in 1980, wasn't it? Oh, takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> I did a bit of armchair quality control on that one. <clears throat> 
Bass are now riding high in the Bitter League with premium quality Stones Bitter. Lovely drop of stuff that is, if I do say so myself. <laughs> hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, the important thing is that with our understanding and experience of the market, we at Bass have been able to come up with what is described here as a new initiative to complement our established premium bitter brand. Well, I don't know about that, but it's a cracking bit of new look packaging. <clears throat> There you are. A new 440ml can and a brand new label for the 2 litre PET bottle. Gaining popularity all the time and just the job for weekends. <laughs> if I may, Miss Wright. <clears throat> hey, what do you think of the new designs then, eh? <laughs> nice and traditional, aren't they? Brewers are fine bitter since 1761. <laughs> now, I tell you, all this packaging lot has all been thoroughly researched. Apparently, this traditional type label has higher appeal both to us gentlemen and you ladies. That's amazing, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> Psychology, that is. Shelf impact. That's what the new worthy's got. See, all your traditional beer values are coming back now, aren't they? Taste and body and whatnot. And this label gets all this across to the customers. And of course, when they've bought it once, You've got them, haven't you? They'll come back again and again. Oh, by the way, the transit cases are branded for better in-store display. Yeah, have a look at this, uh, these, um... Survey results. Oh, yeah, survey results. This is independent consumer research, this is. It says so here. In London, see, 58% of the people who were asked preferred Worthy's special to Trent Bitter. And in Birmingham... It was even more of a walkover. Look, 71% preferred worthies. So it stands to reason, doesn't it? Not only will the customers be after your tenant's pilsners, they'll also want to get their hands on your worthies. <laughs> but what about the price? I hear you ask. How much extra are we charging the good old British public for this beautifully packaged new look great British beer? Not a penny. In fact, along with the new look packs, Bass have actually cut the price of Worthington Special. That's right, cut it! In cans and in the PET bottles. And they're providing some pretty nifty support to make sure that good old Joe public gets to see it and try it. Now that means 20 pence off coupons, not only in the Daily Mirror this time, but also in the Star and Sun. <laughs> <laughs> not on page three, incidentally. It's a national campaign, including the free draw for the Commodore SX-64 home computer. In fact, with the Worthington Special Roadshow distributing still more coupons until the end of September, almost 20 million will be in circulation for Worthington Special Bitter. So, convert them into sales, and I'll rest my case. See, there's no need to create awareness for Worthies. It's tried, tested, and very popular. The public love the party cans and have already taken to the new two-litre PET bottles and when you think that bitters are already out selling light ales and that by 1986 price competitive bitters like Worthy's will be selling up to 2.7 million cases per year, well, ladies and gentlemen, need I say more? You simply cannot afford to miss a sales and profit opportunity like this! I've got to remind them about where they can be in a recognised brand name so the customers know they're getting quality. That's right. I've got to reinforce that business about shelf appeal, a design that promises a product that delivers. That's it's true. Yeah. That's true. And I've got to mention the heavy marketing support that will make sure the customer sees Worthy and tries it. No, you... And I've got to round it off with some sort of comment about that price-quality combination that keeps customers coming back for more. No need. It's all on the screen. Eh? They can read it. Can they? Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Technological uh, progress leaves me behind. Do you know, Bert? What? You really were marvellous. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I really were, weren't I? <laughs> And see you out there now, in front of a spellbound audience, selling it like it is, as Mr. Whittlebury would say. That's my fondest memory. What's yours? Well, I'll have a couple of bottles of worthies and a few cans of tenants, if it's all the same to you, Miss Ryan.